Dom here from Essential RC. I have a prediction for 2021, and that is that I think head tracked FPV in fixed wing models is going to be the next big thing. I was during lockdown, you know, when the RC flying clubs were all shut here in the UK, I went to a disused airfield and saw some of the FPV guys down there that I knew hang out uh, down, down at that location and saw a guy called Gooey who had converted a free wing L39 80mm EDF jet to head tracked FPV. So he not only had the DJI digital FPV system in it but he had also taken the pilot figure and modified it into a pan tilt mechanism so that when he moved his head using the quantum head track module on top of his DJI goggles the camera inside the jet would also move absolutely fantastic he shared some of that video with me which I uploaded onto the, the Essential RC YouTube channel a few weeks ago and was hugely successful I think it's had over half a million views so obviously a lot of people are very interested in it in this type of thing out there. Um, I had to try it myself. So the first thing I did was get hold of the DJI digital FPV system, not cheap, but I figured a, a fantastic investment. So I got hold of that. But then I was thinking about which model should I convert to FPV first, head tracked FPV. Now it just so happened hanging up on the wall, I had an old Avios Spitfire still working, but I hadn't used it for a while. So I set about converting that. Now, in terms of the, the pan tilt mechanism, I didn't initially want to go to the effort of creating my own, my own pan tilt mechanism. So I bought the ProPan pan tilt mechanism from fpvgadgets.com in the States. Took a little while to arrive. And then I incorporated the DJI FPV camera onto that. And it worked really well. I flew alongside a Freewing A10, fantastic experience, and I also flew alongside a Flightline Spitfire, amazing as well. Really, really immersive experience, about as, as good, an amazing experience, I've never had anything like it before, and just so much more fun than flying line of sight, I have to say. So I thought I would put together this relatively short video of what head tracking is all about, what the what equipment you can get hold of, and just some of the tips that I have around getting into head tracked FPV for the first time. Okay, so here's the Avios Spitfire. Here's the ProPan pan tilt unit from fpvgadgets.com with a 3D printed mount on top that Jason kindly printed for me on his printer with the DJI camera on top of it. This is the two cell LiPo that powers the FPV camera. Don't need that plugged in at the moment for the purposes of this demonstration. The two servos that are in here in the pan tilt mechanism are powered off the two uh, channels in the receiver that are getting power from the six cell pack that's also powering the servos in the model and the motor through the speed controller. So you can see that it moves up and down, left and right, as I move the head tracking module that's on top of the FPV goggles. So this is the Fat Shark. Trinity three axis external head tracker module. The bad news is they don't make this anymore. It's discontinued. You can't get it for love or money. I was just very lucky that I had one. The only other head tracker module that I know of is the Quantum external head tracker that used to be sold by Hobby King and that is discontinued. So there's a real space in the market, I think, for this. This is going to be um, this is going to be the big thing for next year, I reckon. 
So one of these companies or both these companies need to start making these again because they will get they will sell like hotcakes. I forgot to mention there's also an internal fat shark, a Trinity three axis head tracker um, module that goes inside the fat shark uh, goggles. But again, that is discontinued as well. I don't know why external head trackers aren't made anymore by these by these companies. Maybe they thought the demand wasn't going to be there. So how do you set this up? Let's talk about that next. OK, so I've gone into setup mode on my DX18. Apologies for the reflection here. I can't do much about that. But I hold down the roller and turn on and it goes into this setup menu. And if I go down to trainer, then I can configure what channels I give the second transmitter to if I'm teaching someone to fly. So say, for example, I'm teaching someone to fly a jet for the first time. I would probably choose to slave over the primary controls such as the throttle aileron, on elevator and rudder. This is assuming they're a competent pilot, right? But if they haven't used landing gear, retractable landing gear and flaps before, I may choose to keep control of those when I give them control of the, the jet when I flick the H switch at the back here. So when it's down, I've got control of everything. When I flick it up, I give them control of everything that I've decided to slave over to them. Now, how it works with a head tracker unit is that you want to just slave over two channels for the pan and tilt servos that are in here. So I, on this, on this particular Spitfire, I opted to do it with auxiliary two and three channels. So you can see everything else is master and aux two and three are slaved. So that means when I put switch up, then I start transmitting what is happening on the head tracker for pan and tilt through the transmitter to the receiver that's in the Spitfire and to those two servos that are in the pan and tilt mechanism. It's really that easy. Probably will work slightly differently on your transmitter if you do set it up. And on the instructions, you see that it comes with a Futaba and Turnigy data cable so, but that means, I mean, I think I use the Turnigy one for Spectrum, but there are other radios that are supported. And if you go to fpvlab.com, you can find out what other radios transmitters are supported. Um, a few other things that can be configured through this, you hold down the button on the head tracker at the front here, when you power it up, and it goes into a setup menu so you can change various things. And you may choose to trans uh, to transmit pan and tilt on different channels. It depends what you're using the other channels for in your uh, in your aircraft. So I've got channels, is it seven and eight, or two and three, probably. I set it up for that. But then you can do a few other things here other interesting thing you can do here is you can change the pan and the tilt ratios from one to one so that it moves the, basically the same amount as your head or you can speed it up so that the pan or the, the tilt servo moves a little bit quicker so 50 percent quicker i think this means than your head so it means that it will you know for a little movement of your head it will move further on the servo which i've actually done for all the models i've set set up so just the final thing to say about the Spitfire is that this propan pan tilt mechanism is fantastic um, in the Spitfire, but it is rather large. It has a very large footprint. But the good thing about it is, is that the pan mechanism is on a belt drive. So there's a three. They've changed one of the servos in here to be uh, 360 degrees, but it's on a belt mechanism to make it really smooth. And you don't typically see that. So it's one of the few gadgets out there that does it. 
So that's my quick explanation of head tracking FPV in this Avios Spitfire. But let's have a look at my next head tracked FPV project. So here we go, this is my next head tracked FPV project. This is an FMS Extra 330, all electric power system. It's a 12 cell setup, so very powerful and two meter wingspan, so it's a really good size. So inspiration for this really is, I thought it would be good fun to fly an aerobatic model using head tracked FPV and inspired by what I saw GUI do with the free wing L39, I thought I would take the pilot that was in here, the pilot figure that was in here and change that into a pan tilt mechanism. Okay, so switch H up on my transmitter. So I'm now transmitting AUX2 and AUX3 for the head tracking. So if I move the head tracking movement, you can see my friend Bob here moving left, right, up and down. So let's look a little closer at the pilot and what I've done here. Now, this is my first attempt at doing this and I knew that it wasn't gonna be great, but, and you learn from the first time that you do it. Uh, and just before I, I, I go into that, apologies for the sound of the digital servos, but they are especially noisy on this model. But what you'll see first is that I've put the FPV camera in his head here, giving him a partial lobotomy to kind of semi-hide it. I cut away the base of the pilot and I put it on top of some FR4 glass fibre sheet, which I could touch up a little bit with paint to hide it a bit better. And have embedded a micro servo in the back as well to control the the tilt of his head. So it's a little bit messy, but I would definitely do some things different the next time I do it. I would, for example, probably use a linear server actuator and try and put that inside the body so that that gets hidden away. And I would definitely try and put the camera in his head in, in the front there, but root the cable out the bottom of the figure rather than out of the top like that. So you learn a few things the, the first time you try and do this type of thing, but I knew it wasn't going to be perfect, but it works. And it should give me that head tracked FPV experience flying an aerobatic model. So I'll be doing that soon. But what other FPV, head tracked FPV projects am I thinking about doing in the near future? So this is the next model that I would like to convert to head tracked FPV. This is a Laser 150 four-stroke engine-powered Tiger Moth. Already has a pilot in the pilot seat, but what I think I might do is add in a pan tilt mechanism in here, in the forward position, to uh, capture a head-tracked FPV image to my FPV goggles. So the the complication with this is that it is a, an IC model, internal combustion engine. And as we all know, the problem with IC models is if you put an onboard camera on there is vibration. So I'm going to have to think about and experiment with how to dampen that vibration if I have a pan tilt mechanism in that forward position there. But I'm very keen to do it because I think that would just be a great FPV flying experience to fly a Tiger Moth in head tracked FPV mode. So uh, showing you a, an easy pan tilt mechanism that you can get hold of. These are sold on eBay by lots of different vendors on eBay. And it's a, a little 3D printed kit. It, you know, it's a little bit primitive it's not exactly smooth in the way that it works, but
it's not bad for how much you pay. You can get them with and without servos. But I might just try using this for the first time out before I start. Well, I've got to find an, a pilot, actually. I don't really want to cut up the pilot that's already inside the model. I need to find another one and start cutting that up. But I may just, to get the flying experience, try this for the first one. It's, it's good enough, but it's not exactly smooth, I would, I would say. Not as smooth as I want, like the belt drive mechanism for panning in the Avios Spitfire, but probably good enough for an initial flight. My ultimate aim is to convert something like this to head tracked FPV. This is a Calf Models Ultra Flash, powered by a Jetcat P160SX turbine engine. We'll do about 200 to 250 miles an hour flat out. Uh, two meter wingspan, all composite, molded fuselage and wings. So probably the most exciting model in my collection to fly and something I would definitely like to convert to FPV. Whether this or maybe a smaller turbine model to start off with, but that's definitely my ultimate aim and I'm learning with each project that I do. So look out for the Tiger Moth soon and a turbine project soon after that. Got a few FPV projects, small FPV projects we're doing in the meantime alongside those. So you can see we've got the Eosheen air loader at the back there. We've got the Sonic Model AR Wing Pro and we've got the, the Dolphin as well. So these are not head tracked, but uh, really good FPV uh, models if you want to try FPV fixed wing for the first time. So thanks for tuning in to Essential RC and getting my take on head tracked FPV and how exciting 2021 is going to be. And I really do think that head tracked FPV in fixed wing models is going to be quite a thing next year and I'm looking forward to exploring it more. So thanks for tuning in to the Essential RC YouTube channel. Links for some of these products are in the video description and the pinned comment. You might want to subscribe to the Essential RC YouTube channel for further updates and uploads that we do in the future but please remember to click the bell icon for notifications of those uploads. But thanks for watching, see you next time. Uh, Jester, see if I can give you a run for your money here. Damn, this gets good. Good tone. I got good tone. I got tone, I got tone! Fire it! Get in there, Maverick! It's happening! Oh, come on! Maverick! What the hell are you doing? Get back hard right. Help me engage. Come on, lock up, baby. Lock up, baby. Lock up. I got him locked. Bingo. Hey, I'm hit. We're coming apart. I can't control it. Hold on, two. Twenty. We're going down. Got it. Got it. Jesse. 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 Crash and burn, huh, man? Free wing L39 converted to FPV, and the DJI FPV system and the camera has been installed in, in the pilot.
<laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Is this your idea of fun, man?